This video covers the steps to configure the VLAN feature on the below mentioned Proxim Tsunami and Ornoco products. Note, this video is not intended to address the VLAN protocol uh, slash terminology and implementation on the network level. Uh, proper VLAN configuration requires that the user has adequate understanding and experience uh, of both VLAN protocol and of uh, general networking. Uh, please contact your network administrator before attempting any configuration changes on your network. Incorrect VLAN configuration may cause loss of management access to the QBMP radios. Okay, so um, I'm doing a modification to a video that I already have uh, for um, how to configure VLANs. Uh, the original video was for the, uh, the 8800 series. Okay, uh, one of the reasons why I'm redoing this video is um, for simplicity's sake, okay? Um, so what we have here is uh, the uh, the 10100 series. Okay, so this is going to go for uh, the QB MP 10100 series as uh, previously mentioned. Okay, um, you can configure VLANs on uh, in the new GUI if you win. So when you log in to uh, admin uh, public, so this is the GUI that you're going to get. Okay. So when you click on uh, network, you go down here to VLANs and you're going to get all the VLAN information. Okay. But uh, one of the features that uh, the new GUI, if you will, the admin GUI does not offer is called temporary commit. And temporary commit is extremely important, especially for VLANs, because uh, let's just say that you, uh, especially when you do management VLANs, um, if you type in the wrong VLAN or you type in the right VLAN and your uh, system is not configured correctly, which everything is going to be covered, uh, you're going to lock yourself out, okay? With the temporary commit, which I'm going to show here in a minute, um, all you really have to do is um, just power cycle the radio and uh, it's going to just uh, go back to the original, the previous config. Okay, so how to get there is, um, so you log in and you're looking at the admin. So this is the, uh, the original GUI. You're going to come up here to this little hourglass looking thing, okay? And you're going to click advance, okay? And this is going to take you to the um, original GUI, if you will. So this is the, the same GUI that uh, you're going to see throughout uh, the 800 and the 8000. They share this, uh, this particular GUI, all right. Uh, what the thing that I have uh, that I mentioned before is this right here: temporary commit. Okay, so uh, the procedure that you're going to see in the video is the same. So uh, the one thing I just uh, want to remind you is uh, you're going to hit, I'm going to press OK. So after a little every change that you're going to make, okay, you're going to enable VLANs, okay, and you're going to make whatever changes you're going to make. Okay, your uh, VLAN, especially for management VLANs. Okay, you're going to click OK. So instead of hitting commit, which is permanent, and then that's how you're going to lock yourself out, you're going to hit temporary commit. Okay, if you do not lose access to the radio and everything's configured, uh, that's great. You could go ahead and hit commit. After you hit temporary commit and you do lose access to the radio, the only thing you just do is just power cycle it, and um, you should be able to. Uh, gain access to the radio again and uh, contact Proxim Technical Support and we'll be more than happy to assist you. Before we dive into uh, configuring the VLANs, um, it's extremely important that we cover VLAN management. Now, misconfiguring VLAN management uh, is the easiest way for you to get yourself locked out of your radios. Um, now, there's only there's two scenarios that we're going to cover, either tagged or untagged. Okay, and basically the only thing that the radio is doing is following uh, the configuration of your VLAN switch. 
okay and I'm gonna cover that one uh, once again either it's gonna be tagged or untagged and we're gonna go ahead and cover that now the first one we are gonna go ahead and cover is untagged okay once you enable VLAN the VLAN management ID is set to negative one which means that it is untagged meaning that all VLAN tags are going to be dropped uh, VLANs are not recognized by the management frame okay so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of untagged so what we have here is a VLAN switch a 8000 radio and a PC doesn't no matter what it is okay so uh, what we are covering here is untagged so what untagged indicates is that the radio itself the proxim radio is not expecting a vlan id tag okay so the pc itself that's connected to the vlan switch is going to have to be configured connected to a uh, vlan unaware port the native vlan the native vlan is the portion of the switch that is not configured for any vlans typically it's going to be a vlan one it's with all the rest of the vlans resigned they're not actually part of a vlan so you could have vlan five six seven eight those are going to be your traffic vlans the native vlan typically vlan one is going to be the rest of the vlans that act like a normal switch you know because the um, untagged management VLAN ID is going to drop anything that actually has a VLAN ID to it. You're going to have to connect the port of the PC to a native VLAN port or a port that is not actually being used actively as a VLAN. If you are going to connect the PC to a port that is actually set for a VLAN. Uh, let's just say argument's sake you have management is untagged and data is 30. You connect it to a port on the switch that is configured for VLAN 30. It, all traffic is going to drop. The management dra traffic is going to drop because the radio is not aware of any VLAN 30 for management. Okay, so once again, in that case, you're going to have to connect the PC to the native VLAN or to a port that's not being used uh, for any VLAN uh, configuration at all. All right, up next, we're going to cover when the management VLAN ID is actually tagged. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a VLAN tag of 10. Okay, now uh, in this scenario, for argument's sake, um, traffic is going to be VLAN 30 and management VLAN ID is going to be 10. Okay, so uh, now you're going to have to configure the radio. Uh, so it could be uh, managed via VLAN 10 and then uh, what to do on the switch side as well. So on the radio, um, just go ahead and we're going to click on advanced VLAN Ethernet. Of course, VLAN status is enabled. We're going to go ahead and type in VLAN management of 10. Click OK. OK, then we're going to go ahead and click on Ethernet. Now, what we're doing here, OK, and that kind of even depends on if we're in transparent or in trunk mode. OK, uh, and we're going to go ahead and cover these two later on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we add both VLAN 30 for our traffic and in VLAN 10 for our management okay now this is just telling the radio to expect uh, every uh, VLAN that it's going to be uh, aware of that's going to be passing through it okay so let's go ahead and take a look at um, management VLAN that is tagged okay so now we have VLAN management enabled so the way that the switch is going to be configured is uh, basically one of two ways and it's really going to depend on if your NIC on your PC supports VLANs or doesn't support VLANs okay and that really is going to depend on how you going to configure that particular switch port so um, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the switch port that the radio is connected to okay and once again we have vlan 30 and vlan 10 vlan 30 is traffic vlan 10 is management okay so the switch port over here is going to be configured for both vlan 30 and 10 
okay now we're going to go over to the switch port where our pc is connected to okay now once again depends on if your pc is vlan aware of una or unaware if it is aware then you could go ahead and set it to trunk vlan 10 and then go ahead and set your nic uh, to vlan 10. if it is unaware Okay, which means that the switch port does not understand VLANs. So you're going to set it either to untagged or access. Okay, but you're also going to make it part of VLAN 10, which means that all traffic going from the switch to port to port are going to still going to be tagged by the second that they go out to the radio, uh, excuse me, out to the uh, server, they're going to be stripped. It's going to be on tag now as the traffic moves back into the switch port the radio is going to re-tag it with vlan 10 or whatever management you have so you have to uh, remember that both of these are going to have to be set up for vlan 10 one way or another either one is going to be trunked when it understands vlans or on tagged or access depending on the switch if it does not understand vlans Okay, so um, one of the things I want to cover is uh, the allow untag frames portion, okay, option. So let me kind of explain how this, um, how this works. Uh, it's part of uh, really um, management. So let's see here. So if I click on VLAN and we have uh, the VLAN status and we have the management VLAN ID is negative one, as we've covered, is, is untagged, okay? So let's just say that uh, you have a, um, a trunk uh, backbone, right? So the radio, the Ethernet port is set to trunk. That means that whatever is connected to the radio has to be set to trunk, okay? Uh, it, it's tagged, but your uh, management is, is not tagged. It's just negative one, uh, untagged, part of the native VLAN, right? So you need to connect to, uh, to the radio so you can manage it. Right. Um, so what are you going to do is you're going to come, you're going to leave this as one. You're going to come down here. All right. Ethernet, you're going to allow, you're going to set that to enable, click OK. All right. Now, what I would do is uh, um, definitely click temporary commit. All right. Because this covers the, uh, the 10 100 series radios. So now that you have it uh, set up, and then of course you have all your um, uh, tagged uh, uh, IDs over here, your trunk IDs. So now you're going to have to connect directly to the power supply, directly to the PoE, your PC to the PoE. And now you should be able to manage both radios. Now, mind you, this is going to have to be done on um, both radios. If this is a, uh, a, a quick bridge, then endpoint A, endpoint B. If this is a, a multipoint, then it's going to have to be done on the base station all in your subscribers. All right, so then just enable, okay, and then just to, uh, to try it, go ahead and temporary commit, okay, and um, then you should be able to directly connect to it and manage the radio uh, via the PoE. Transparent mode is the equivalent to no VLAN support and is the default mode. Uh, for the QuickBridge and MP radios. Um, it is used to connect VLAN aware and unaware networks. An interface in transparent mode forwards both tagged and untagged frames. Um, so if we look at a diagram here, we have a uh, uh, tsunami uh, multipoint. We have a base station a satellite. They are in transparent mode. Down here we have a uh, VLAN aware switch and a VLAN aware switch and just uh, two separate networks on either end. Um, what happens is that the, the VLAN information is passed through the base station. The base station does not do anything with it. It does not look at it. It doesn't modify it. It doesn't tag it. Uh, it doesn't do anything. It just passes along to the satellite, just as a plain old bridge, invisible wire. Uh, this information is just passed along to the uh, other VLAN switch, and then, of course, the VLAN switch um, distributes it to according to its uh, uh port information all right so let's go ahead and take a look at transparent mode first um, to set it up uh, go ahead and click on advanced vlan and then ethernet okay click on vlans and uh, this is where you'll be able to enable disable and then 
uh, click on Ethernet, and then this is going to give us our mode. This is a base station, so we only have transparent trunk. This is a subscriber, and we have transparent access and trunk. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and go over transparent. Um, just as we talked about, the information is going to go from the VLAN switch past the base station to the satellite to the VLAN switch. Um, you could have 200 VLANs, the radio not going to care, it doesn't care, it's just going to pass it along uh, happily, okay. By default, this is, this is the setting, okay, so you really don't need to do a whole lot. Um, the only thing you may want to, do, you're going to have to end up doing is on VLAN and go ahead and enable VLAN style so the radio is at least knows that it's doing VLANs. But the second you do that, you're going to have to um, make sure that your VLAN ID uh, is uh, set correctly. And that's something that we um, covered already. Okay, so this is a, a 1Q frame. So if it's negative 1, it's going to be part of the uh, native VLAN. Okay, so um, if you do enable and you leave this on one, it means you're going to only be able to manage the radio from a from the native VLAN, which is uh, un, uh, untagged. Okay, the second you put a tag number in here, you have to make sure that it is uh, part of the actual uh, tag. So if you put VLAN 5, make sure that you are configured for VLAN 5 and you switch to manage the radios. And it's going to be the same on both base and satellite, so make sure that you do both, not just one, because you're going to lose access to the other. Trunk mode uh, can be configured on the BSU, SU, endpoint A, and endpoint B. This mode is used to connect VLAN aware networks with VLAN aware networks. In the trunk mode, the Ethernet interface of the device forwards only those TAC frames whose VLAN ID matches with the VLAN ID present in the uh, trunk table okay so uh, in our diagram here we have a base station a satellite okay both of them are set to trunk uh, the VLAN switch is set to trunk it's VLAN aware okay uh, that port is set for VLANs 2 3 and 4 uh, the once again this is set to trunk and in the VLAN table we have uh, 2 3 and 4 Okay, the same thing for the satellite. We have uh, VLAN 2, 3, and 4. Uh, it is set to trunk, and it is connected to a VLAN aware switch. Okay, um, in this particular scenario, only uh, tagged packets are going to be allowed. Okay, uh, if there's going to be any, any um, untagged frames, they're going to be dropped, or if there are any VLANs uh, that are not in the VLAN table, let's just say that uh, down in the switch, there's also 5, 6, and 7, but the radios are not aware in the VLAN table of 5, 6, and 7, uh, they are going to be dropped because the, uh, the radio is not aware of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at uh, trunk mode. Okay, so um, what we have here is um, the same. Okay, here's my, my VLANs. Click on Ethernet, and then we're going to go ahead and set up the trunk. Okay. Um, now, remember, with trunk mode, uh, the device itself has to be connected to a VLAN aware switch or device. You can have a, um, a PC that has a NIC that supports VLANs. Uh, but you may also have untagged frames as well. Uh, maybe management or something like that that you want to allow so you could go ahead and click uh, select enable and then that's going to go ahead and pass on tag frames itself so um going with our uh, diagram okay the um, the switch itself is configured for vlans two three and four uh, we configured the bsu table right uh, and the su table for vlans two three and four and again the the other side of the switch is also configured for the same vlans so what we have here is just that. This is the base station, and here is the satellite. Okay, uh, two, three, and four added. If we want to add more, just go ahead and click add. Go ahead and add whatever one you want. And let's say, for instance, we're gonna do five. Click add, and here's five. Now you gotta remember that you could have all of these VLANs here, but if the VLAN switch port itself doesn't support those particular tags, it's uh, it's really not gonna matter. But you have to make sure, and once again, if you want VLANs two, three, and four to pass from this end to this end, 
okay um you have to make sure that the bsu and the su table and the switch on the opposite end all have the uh, those vlan tags configured um, after you've uh, configured everything um, just go ahead and click OK and commit. And uh, once again, uh, you have to be careful. I'm going to mention several times about the management ID. The second you hit commit, if you uh, already uh, put in a management VLAN ID or you're on a tag port and you leave this as negative one, you're going to lose management to the radio. Okay, so you've really got to make sure that you pay attention to what you're doing to this field over here. VLAN aware networks for VLAN unaware networks. Uh, the egress untagged traffic received in the Ethernet interface are tagged with uh, the configured access VLAN ID and the access VLAN priority before forwarding it to the warp interface. Similarly, all egress tag frames with specified VLAN IDs are untagged at the Ethernet interface and then forwarded. Based on the management VLAN ID configuration, both tagged and non-tagged management frames can access the device from the warp interface. However, only untagged management frames can access the device from the Ethernet interface. The tag frames will be dropped. So um, what we have here is a, um, a Tsunami uh, MP, okay, uh, point to multi-point. We have a base and three satellites over here right so our vlan switch is configured for vlans two three and four the base station is in trunk mode okay uh, and in the vlan table it has vlans two three and four now each one of these subscribers is an access mode okay because what's connected to it is not vlan aware okay um, so we have this one that's stated for vlan two vlan three vlan four and that's all that they know so basically uh, what happens is as the information comes through here the ethernet port's going to strip the tag okay and so this is uh, uh doesn't aware it just becomes uh, part of the broadcast domain from here it's not aware that it's part of any vlans but as the information comes back to the ethernet port on the subscriber is retagged with vlan 4 and then it's sent out this way Okay, so um, this is uh, pretty good for uh, WISPs or uh, um, uh, manufacturing or whatever, but uh, uh, access mode does not um, support VLAN aware. It's uh, non-VLAN aware devices that are connected to the radio. All right, so last but not least, we're going to go ahead and cover access mode. So um, access mode is only configurable on the uh, satellite or the endpoint B radio. Okay, uh, once again, access mode is, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our diagram. Uh, here we have a, a base station with uh, three subscribers. We still have our VLANs 2, 3, and, two, three, and 4. Uh, the base station has the 2, 3, and 4 in its table. Now, access mode is, is once again, uh, what is connected to the radio is uh, not VLAN aware. Okay, so it just doesn't understand VLANs at all. So it's uh, uh, it's going to strip the packet here, and it's going to go to your PC, switch, or whatever. This makes it just one big broadcast domain. Um, and uh, as it goes back into the radio, it go ahead and retags in this case for VLAN 2. So it strips it going this way, and then retags it going this way. Okay. So um, on the subscriber, what you do is VLAN mode, go ahead and select access here's our vlan mode id remember you can only have one vlan mode id that's all it knows so in this case i picked two you know you have three four whatever it is but it's only one uh if you have a, a particular priority that you wanted to uh to be in also if you wanted to allow untagged management access okay um and in in this particular case uh, what happens is um I mean, you're gonna try to manage the radio uh, from the e from the Ethernet port uh, from the the back end. Um, it's not gonna look at the um, the management ID tag, okay? But when you start looking over here, the management VLAN ID, okay, it's still gonna go back to the way that, as we discussed before, um, negative one indicates that it's uh, uh, not tagged. One Q dot one Q. Uh, so it's going to be part of the native VLAN, okay? So you have to make sure that uh, the second that you hit OK and commit, you are um, 
know what the management VLAN is, if you're going to be part of the um, native VLAN or you're going to be connected to a, uh, a port that's configured for your management. Let's just say if this is VLAN uh, 5 or 4, just make sure that it's configured here and it's also configured on the satellite and the base station and all your radios and then that you uh, um, know what that tag is and that you have a PC that's configured for that tag or a VLAN switch. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.